Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to a very special interview of the Final Cut podcast. And today, I have a guest. She is a singer, dancer, and an actress. She is one of the stars of Work It. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you so, Rihanna Andrade Gomez. How are you? I'm doing great. It's nice and sunny here in Toronto, so I'm just enjoying my day. I'm so glad it's sunny where you are. I'm so glad. <laughs> Right, you, so you've been dancing since you were three and acting since you were six. How did you get started? Um, So pretty much as a little girl, I used to be kind of running around the house, putting on a show for everyone. And so my family's like, my mom, you got to put her in dance or something. So I started dancing at the age of three, and from there I fell in love with it. Um, started off doing hip-hop and acro, and then from there I just, you know, kept doing more and more and more and more. And then acting kind of just came along with the dancing. I used to go to auditions for dancing. And then my agent's like, oh, do you want to try acting? And I was I was a very outgoing kid. And so it just worked out. And I started, you know, from there on out, started acting. So, yeah. So you're, you're quite a Jill of all trades. You can <laughs> dance, act, and sing. Is there anything you can't do? Honestly, that that's about it. Like, the dancing, acting, and sometimes singing, uh, that's that's my main thing. It's, I put my whole uh, life into especially dance. So can't really do anything else. Um, but I will take those three things and roll with it. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not going to argue with that, nor that I take. <laughs> so I'll start with your dancing. You are quite skilled in quite a few genres. So is there any genres you are still learning or would like to learn at some point in the future? Yeah, I would love to learn ballroom. Um, I've done like some fun like salsa stuff, but I would love to like dig in and learn like a foxtrot or the tango, something like that. And also just like in hip hop, I'm still learning how to like do locking and popping and all that stuff. But yeah, pretty much just those two things, I'd say. Okay, so the big question, could we see you someday as a, pro- as a professional dancer on, I'll say Dancing with the Stars, or as we know it over here, Strictly Come Dancing? Um, yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I don't know if that's unfair, because I'm a professional dancer, but I don't do ballroom, so I would kind of be out of my element, but I would love to do that. would be something, like, that'd be so much fun. So maybe... Oh. If it's in my cards. I hope it is, because you are an absolutely <laughs> fantastic dancer. Thank you. So when you have a dance competition, how much time do you actually get to rehearse and get it as perfect as you can? Um, It depends. I would say, like, usually you have, like, a couple of months to perfect it. So usually we would, we would train from, like, September to October, and then from October to March you would still train, but also learn your routine. So quite a bit of time, um, but you're still always perfecting it till the day of. So, but yeah, that's about it. Easy enough. So as, <laughs> any, as anyone who knows me knows, I like a movie to be accurate to the millimetre. So, so if I'm watching a horror movie, I like it to be, I'll say, as bloody, as gory as possible, but with no CGI, just because so, to me, the whole thing about a ho- having a horror movie is the real- realism and the simplicity. So, mm-hmm. with that being said, do you think dance movies give an accurate representation of both practicing for a dance competition and um, how the dancers actually feel about going into one? I mean, it depends. Obviously, sometimes they're a bit exaggerated, but definitely, like, for work, it, that's exactly how it would work. You would have, like, September, you'd have auditions, you'd get the team, and then you would rehearse, and then you mm-hmm. would most likely have, like, a, you know, regional type thing, and then you'd get to the next round. Most times, you'll make it to the next round. They don't usually do, like, that many cuts if you go to nationals. Um, but then, yeah, you'll have your nationals, and the only thing is that usually it is the same routine. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, same routine that you'll do for uh, the two, but other than that, that's pretty much how it would work. Um, but you'd also have probably more than one just run routine. But for the most part, that's how it would work as a dance here. Is the proverbial uh, go- things are going so badly until about halfway through when uh, the missing element turns up and then they, they nail it so good that they actually win? Yeah, I mean, that's probably won't really happen. I don't think you would get like a national winning team to not win from a team that just trained for months. And actually, while we were filming... They were working on the plot to see if that would actually make sense. Like, would it make sense for dancers who haven't danced their whole life after three months to win? But, I mean, it is a film and you got to make everyone happy. I mean, I think they won off of, like, individuality and just being themselves. But I think in the real world, like, I think Thunderbirds would win if we are, like, the national, you know, 
title champions off mm-hmm. after three years. So I don't know if that's kind of realistic, but <laughs> yeah. Well, it might be, it might not be. Uh, right, so yeah. yourself, how much training do you do a day? Um, well, right now, because obviously we're in COVID, it's a little bit different. But um, on a typical day, I just wake up. And then usually, well, now I'm more into like the teaching side of things. So I actually teach how to dance. But before when I was training, I would go to school all day. And then in the afternoons, I would, uh, in the evenings, I'd go dance for minimum three to four hours and just train. I have like technique class, ballet, um, hip hop, jazz, tap all that fun stuff whereas now as an adult it's the training's a little bit less intense kind of like you take class when you can you work mm-hmm. out when you can yeah i'm um, just kind of fit it in your schedule obviously if a film's coming up like work it i would spend more time and you know the gym working on my cardio and then you train with the choreographers all right here's yeah. a question for you which style of dance took you either the longest to learn or you're still learning um, I'm going to have to say the longest to learn was probably ballet just because there's so much technique behind it and it's just the foundation of dance. So I feel like I'm still perfecting it till this day. Um, and I feel like hip hop came a lot more natural to me as a little kid. I always had like that spunk and that attitude. So that was a little easier for me to grasp. Whereas like ballet took me some time to figure out my body and how to use the technique with all my other um, dance styles, but definitely ballet. Now, what, what the ladies and gentlemen might not be aware of, but I am, is that you were actually you actually had a, a minor role in Suicide Squad, didn't you? Yeah, so um, people are like, how did you dance in that? So we're just like, they pre- pretty much were your movement in the background, um, in the finale, in the end scene with um, Cara Delevingne. And uh, the reason why they hired dancers is because actors or normal people don't know how to move like that. So we kind of move like creatures. But, I mean, being on that set, that was, it's very, very different. Um, it's a lot more serious. We film nights, um, a lot more, you know, of the action of the acting. Whereas like work, it was a lot more of a fun set and uplifting and lots more on the dancing and a younger feel. But very different too, but very different experiences. I was just about to ask you, um, what was it actually like when you were filming your scenes on Suicide Squad? It was, it was intense. Uh, lots of long days. Um, we were in like those costumes for yeah. long, long period of time. But I mean, it was worth it when you're standing next to Will Smith and Cardi Levine, getting to see them work in action. That was, I mean, insane. Again, very different of the two, but I had such a blast working on that. And I just turned 18, so I was like super excited to be like, you know, in the adult realm of, realm of things. So yeah. that was super fun. Did you actually get to have a chat with Will Smith? Yes, I did a couple of times. What's yeah. he like? What's he like as a ma- as a person? He's super nice. Like he came out of his way. I think on like a couple, like the first couple days of set to literally shake my hand and be like, "Hi, I'm Will Smith. What's your name?" Um, he asked. He used to bring like food trucks on set oh. of like tiny Tom donuts and ice cream. So very very nice man. He would sit and talk to us. Like took his time out of his day to you know come say hi, which is super rare and really nice. Did you actually have a bit of a nervous bit where you were like, "Oh my God, Will Smith's talking to me." Yeah, because, like, always, like, up to cool because you don't want to, you know, freak out. But I used to watch Fresh Prince, so I was like, this is insane for me to be standing in front of him. So after a couple of, you know, because we spent a couple of weeks on set, like, the last couple of days, I was like, oh, my God, like, I used to watch you on Fresh Prince. Like, I actually love you. And he was super-duper nice and chill about it, but mm. it was definitely, I was a bit starstruck at first. I must admit, I've been like that before, so I, I entirely relate and I know how you feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So obviously, this is regarding any movie, any movies or TV work you've done. Do you still keep in touch with any of your co-stars? Yeah, I mean, when I was a little kid, it's a bit harder because it's kind of like you go on set and you leave. But as you get older, you obviously social media and you know texting makes things a lot easier. So especially working, we all still talk. Um, we have a big group chat where we all you know communicate in, and everyone from Toronto. It's a bit easier to see them, so I've hung out with them a couple of times. But I definitely do try to keep you know in contact with everyone. It's, it's nice that you try you try and keep in touch. I must admit, when I left school when I was eighteen, I kind of wished, looking back, that yeah. I kept in touch with more people. Yeah, it is hard, you know, because yeah. like everyone has their lives going on. But even just a text once in a while to let them know that you're here, just to like catch up, is always great. Right, we're looking forward to hearing your answers to this. What was it like <laughs> having a supporting role on Work It? Honestly, it was a dream come true. I mean, what I actually originally auditioned just to be an ensemble dancer. So I didn't even go in having an acting role. It wasn't even in all my mind. I was just going there to dance. And then from there, they picked a couple people to go and actually audition for a role. And so from I was like, 
mind blown. Like, okay, they actually want to see me act. And so thank God I had some acting, you know, you know, experience. So I went in and, and then finally I got it. And it was just like, I couldn't have asked for a better cast to work with. And it was just like unreal to actually be like, oh my God, I got a role on a Netflix film and supporting or not or whatever. I was just happy to be a part of the experience and um, excited to see where things, you know, grow from that. But it was definitely unreal. I bet, it, yeah. would, I bet it would be. Um, so here's a question for you. Would you stay in the dance genre of movies or would you be interested in doing other genres? I mean, obviously dance genre is what I like originally started in and it's what I like to do. But of course, I would love to. I'm always up for a new challenge. So I would love to try new things. And do, I actually love action films. So that'd be super cool. But I'm always up for anything. So anything that would come my way, I'm definitely willing to uh, go for. Well, there's, all, there's uh, two cinematic universes that you can always be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> so you've obviously, well, the ladies and gentlemen don't know, but you've actually had a... Had a bit of a hand in hosting, and you hosted the awards show when you yeah. were 12. So what did you learn from your time as a host on Pop It? Um, it was honestly, I, like, back then, I didn't even know, like, how big of a job it was. It was kind of like a fun thing that I did with my friends, because the two other guys that I did it with, we were good friends growing up. Mm. Um, and so I was really actually nervous, because I... I stumble, I, I actually mumble and I stutter and I talk really fast when I'm not thinking. And so at first it took me a, a second to be like, okay, I got to slow down. I got to talk. I have to have fun. But after a couple of um, episodes of shooting, it was just fun to actually, you know, have that role and to, I mean, host and teach. And it, it felt comfortable because it was me teaching dance, which is what I, you know, I've always wanted to do. And it was fun. But I think being 12, I had to like kind of mature just a little bit just to like be able to like actually sit there and teach kids how to dance. Yeah. but it was super fun and it definitely opened up a new perspective of things for me would you go into teaching in your spare time if you could i do i do that right now actually since i was 16 i've been teaching as a side job so yeah there you are if there's any dancers in uh, toronto who want to learn from a good teacher come and see yeah. this lady yeah <laughs> oh yes you also have performed with avril lavigne and uh, raven mm -hmm. raven simone at a fashion show yeah. what, what was that like so Raven Simone, I was really young. I think I was like maybe, I don't even know. I was younger than 10. But um, I used to watch That's Raven growing up. So I was like in awe when we got the job. And it was like a, just a fun fashion show. We got to like rock down the thing. We got to meet her. And that was just like, as a kid, a dream come true. I couldn't be happier. I had a smile from ear to ear that whole day. I actually still have one of the original scripts I wore that she signed that I keep with me because I love her. Um, Avril Lavigne too. Like she's a huge Canadian icon. And it was like a really random job that popped up for an award show. And I was like, I want to do it, whatever. So I auditioned. And it was just fun to be on stage. I love performing live. It just like that rush of adrenaline, that crowd. So that was super, super fun. I always love doing stuff like that. But both lovely people loved working with them. And you work with them again, if you could. If I oh, definitely. Yeah. So you're from Toronto. So the question mm -hmm. is, do you support Toronto Raptors NBA team? Yes, I do. I mean, I'm not a huge sports person. Like, I don't sit and watch every game, but I definitely do rep all the Toronto teams, especially Toronto Raptors. I, I actually try to get in at least one game a year to go watch it um, in the arena. This year I couldn't because of COVID, but um, yeah, I do. I love the Raptors. I bet you were stoked last year when they won the NBA title. Oh, I was like on cloud nine celebrating. <laughs> Yeah, ho hopefully I get to do that this year because I'm a Laker fan, as everybody who listens oh. to interviews knows. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, we <laughs> might we might be in direct competition this year. Maybe. Well, I hope we are anyway. But we'll just see how the playoffs go because obviously it's a bit more complicated than it was uh, last year. So, yeah. and obviously as uh, wrestling fans who listen know, Canada has a long history of great wrestlers. I mean, there's the Hart family, just to begin with, there's Chris Jericho. So, do you love wrestling? No, I do not. I actually, I'm really tiny. I'm only 5'1", so I do not wrestle. I don't watch wrestling. But, um, actually, as a kid, I used to watch a bit of it. I thought it was fun, but as I got older, I kind of got out of it. No, I don't wrestle, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm kind of like that with, uh, with uh, English with, uh, football, so I can totally relate. Yeah. So, obviously, Toronto Raptors have uh, their own dance in their team. So, mm -hmm. would you like to uh, be a part of that at some point, if you could? Actually, when I was little, I used to dance with the Raptors. So, from what when I was you? six, 
yeah, from when I was 6 to 12, I danced with raptors. I used to actually battle um, the raptor mascot as well. So I did that for a while. I don't think I would do it as an adult just because I don't have the, the time to dedicate a full year. Mm-hmm. But as a kid, like, I had, I never want to quit. I got, I was 12, though, like, hey, Brianna, you're getting a little old. Like, you're not a mini dancer anymore. So I finally <laughs> eventually gave it up. But it was fun. As long as you had fun, that's all that matters, right? Yeah. So this next part is just basically, well, this next question is kind of like mm-hmm. what you would say to somebody who's having a crisis of faith regarding what they're doing. So if they're an actor or a singer or a dancer yeah. and they're feeling a bit down, it'd just be I like, mean, what, yeah, what would you say to them? So it'd be like... So I mean, I think just like keep pushing because I feel like sometimes you feel like it's not made out for you or you're not, but you got to have a thick skin and just push through and... I mean, before I got work it, I auditioned for another um, dance film and I didn't get it. I didn't get it past the first round. And I remember being so upset and just being like, oh, my God, like, am I good enough? Like, what's wrong with me? And then I got work it. And it made me realize that, like, everything happens for a reason. And if you don't get one job, don't just, you know, be upset about it. Just keep on working hard. Keep training because something's out there for you. As long as you put your, you know, you work hard, you keep training and just don't give up because you just don't know what's out there. But I think, yeah, perseverance and you know, if you love to do it, that's the most important part. If you love to do it, then just keep on doing it. Well, I must admit, that's kind of inspired me a little because I did actually get that <laughs> way in a lot of things. So it's just nice to hear somebody say something like that. Thank you. All right. So uh, this is a question that actually is quite, I say, is quite relevant nowadays, considering what we're going mm-hmm. through. Do you think that cinemas will soon be replaced by straight to streaming services? So. A movie like John Wick will go on like Universal's a streaming service. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I I'm sad to say because I love going to the theater and I love watching um, films, you know, in theater. But I just feel like streaming is taking over. It's just so accessible and it's so easy just to open up your laptop and go on Netflix or Disney Plus or Crave or whatever you use and. Um, And you get to watch it a million times over, you know. I I know me as a film, if I like it, I like to watch it, you know, more than one time or, you know, to go back and watch a scene again. So, I mean, I hope that there's still cinemas. I mean, I, I... because of COVID, you know, there hasn't been theaters, at least in Canada, we can't, can't go watch a movie. So people have turned to streaming. But I mean, I hope there's still a balance of things, but I really do think that streaming is going to take over the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's hope it doesn't. I mean, uh, English cinemas uh, reopened now, actually. In fact, I went on Wednesday to see Chris Nolan's new movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. The one thing I will say is that if you really want to experience proper viewing of that movie you have to watch it there or watch it in imax yeah that's that's the thing too is that some Mm. some films are meant to be seen on a big screen or an imax or that a cool experience so that's why i hope that cinemas are still a thing but you just never know well let's hope let's hope it doesn't end but i do see your point of view all right then uh aside from dancing what are you passionate about passionate about i'm actually very passionate about I know it's so related to dance, but teaching in general, mm. I just like find, I just love inspiring people and teaching and motivating, especially kids. Cause you know, they're our future and they're the next generation. And I just, I love being able to sit back and help them and watch them unfold their journey. It's a whole different um, perspective when you get to see kids that you train or that you help or that you work with evolve and become the dancers they are today. So definitely um, teaching and inspiring kids. All right, can I ask you this question? Are you more inspired when one of your students surpasses you in terms of talent and ability? Yeah, 100%, because I feel like, I mean, obviously I'm always, I want to inspire myself and I want to progress, but I when I get to see one of my students do it, it's just a whole different, like, almost like mother, I don't a mother, but almost that, like, motherhood feeling where yeah. it's like someone you trained has succeeded. And it's just, it's a great feeling. It is, it is definitely a feeling. It's a feeling that's not yeah. to be forgotten either. Right, so obviously, quarantine depending, what other projects have you got coming up or that you can tell us about? Um, As of right now, nothing that I can um, speak on. I don't really have anything for sure. Um, because of the quarantine, it's been difficult. There hasn't really been much opportunities, but um, this past week, there has been some auditions and there has been some... Um, hype happening in toronto so hopefully something's happened soon but as of right now um nothing in particular that i can speak on um i've just been training um working on my youtube channel and that's about it well i if you do have any auditions and you can do something i wish you the best of luck with it 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is this is quite tough for you. What would you say are your career highlights? Because you've had a lot. You've had a you've had a very successful career. Thank you. Um, I feel like some of my highlights growing up definitely would be um, Pop It was definitely up there for me. It was like the first time that I hosted my show. I had a you know bigger role in things. And then I have to say um, I did The Next Step as well. And that was just like a bigger, you know, dance thing that was international and played around the world. And then definitely Work It because that just put me on the map. And it was on a Netflix streaming site and, you know, the whole world's watching it and I had a sporting role. So definitely those three things. Yep. Well, hopefully there's more there's more to come for you hopefully yep all right what would all right speaking of uh hope speaking of that last question what would you like the future to hold for you both personally and professionally um professionally i hope to at least star in a couple more films whether that's dance related or not but to continue growing and inspiring people and then i think personally just you know to be happy and to live just a free life and not have to worry about um anything really <laughs> ideally live the old worthwhile life and do what you can to help others enjoy exactly life. yeah exactly i can relate to that yeah right so and last question obviously if anybody wants to follow you on socials after they've seen work it how would they go about it um i have instagram and tiktok same username so b-r-i-a-n-a -A, another a g-o-m-e-s and i have a youtube channel which might with my full name brianna Andrade gomes which i will be uh, subscribing to as soon as we get off this call <laughs> thank you and with that ladies and gentlemen i give you brianna Andrade gomez Thank you so much.